welcome back to our training sessions. Today, I would like to walk you through the concept of image-based modeling. We are going to create a modular polygon mesh based on the digital textures or image reference. Later, we shall pierce all the modular pieces into becoming a crate. Do remember to download this texture image to your local drive before we begin. So let's fire up our my applications. Before we begin, let's ensure our working units are set to meter. Next, we shall create a simple polygon point. Turn on the shading mode and wireframe, and hide the grid for better visibility. Go to the channel box and to configure the polygon's input. Once done, let's set up a shader for housing the image. Go to Window, look for Rendering Editors, and I'll select Hypershade, and a Hypershade window will appear. Well, in Maya, there are many different types of shaders and utility nodes. We shall get to work with them when we get to delve deeper into Maya itself. Now let's try to scroll back up. I'd like you to create a Blim shader. You should be able to see a new Blim shader has been created. After you click on it, with shader still in selections, the basic properties of a shader would be displayed in the channel box as well. To have more in-depth control for the shader, let's double-click on the shader within the Hypershade window. You will see the channel box has switched to Attribute Editor. Let's close our Hypershade window for now, and we shall rename our Blink shader. To map the digital image into the shader, you shall use the color node. Let's click on this checker button for create a render node. Click on the file button, then click on these folder icons. Do navigate to your local directory where you have stored your digital image. Once selected, click open. We shall see the newly loaded textures. Let's click on these icons for returning to the shader's interface. As you can see, the textures has integrated with our box shader. Good, we shall assign the shader onto this polygon point. Let's open up the hypershade window again. First, select the polygon point, then go to the hypershade window right mouse button click and hold on to the shader. Activate the assign material to selections. Then close the hypershade window. To see the loaded texture, let's click on this show textures icon. You should be able to see the textures being mapped to the polygon mesh. Let's viewport to top view and toggle back our channel box. Prior to model with a digital image, you will need to know about some concept about UV. For instance, let's select these edges and uh, use the move tool to reposition our selected edges. You will notice the image will go distorted as each of the vertex is served as a mapping coordinates to our texture's map. Let's undo our moving actions. In order to work effectively, we will need to preserve the UV coordinates of the image when we are sculpting on the surface. Let's double-click on our Move tool for changing the tool's setting. Please check on the Preserve UVs options. Now let's try to move the edges again. The image is no longer distorted, as its UV coordinates has been well preserved. Let's undo our move, 
and close the two settings window. Now let's start off with these horizontal edges. Do double click to select them all and uh, reposition them to match the texture. Repeat the same step for the bottom edges as well. And let's remove these edges. By default, the Blin shader's speculability seems to be quite high, and substantially, it has made our image map too bright looking. Let's change the shading. Select the mesh, and uh, click on the attribute editor, and you could see our attribute editor is clouded with a list of history. Let's clear all the previous construction histories. Now let's click on the box shader tabs now, Scroll down and I'll reset the eccentricity to zero. Switch back the channel box and let's realign the edges again in accordance to the image texture. Switch back to perspective view now, we shall reset the pivot point and uh, rotate our mesh upright 90 degrees. Try to set these faces. And uh, click on the extrude functions. Change offset, then drag the dimension out from the Z axis. Repeat the same step again for the bottom faces.
grab hold to these faces and let's extrude them inwards. And let's try to work out the cross segments as well. Go to the front view and activating the interactive split polygon tool. Do position the vertex with your side and press enter once you are done. Let's fix some of the end gone faces first before we proceed to the extrusions. Select these faces now. And I'll switch to perspective view, click extrude, push the faces inward, then change its offset. It's about time to clear the history again. Our modular mesh is about to complete. Let's change the pivot point now before we perform the duplicate operations. Once done, let's duplicate the mesh and change its scale X to negative 1.
then let's duplicate the mesh again. We set the new mesh rotation x to 0 degree. Press and hold the V key for activating the snap to vertex functions. Then try to move the mesh to snap to the other end. Let's repeat the duplicate steps again for patching up the remaining areas. And uh, OK, we are almost done. Select all the meshes and combine them. Next, click on the Merge with DCs functions. Let's double click on our Move tool and uncheck the Preserve UV options. Now, our new asset has far too many polygons. Let's try to optimize it a little bit by removing some of the edges while reconnecting some others. Try to use the interactive split tool for this task. This image-based modeling concept is a powerful prototyping technique. It's very good for churning out 2D assets in the fastest mean. However, there's a downside to this technique. Most of the extruded faces would have distorted visual. You will need to reproject the mesh UV again if you want to use it as a final game mesh. And that's all for these training sessions. You should try to optimize the mesh to the optimum means if any possible. And thank you for staying with us for these training sessions.